is mkukabi from the previous video that was posted on carbohydrates the uh, i saw two questions the first question was what is the true or definition of a carbohydrate and what are the other functions carbohydrates are one of the three major sources of foods for humans and it serves as a primary energy source so it can be said to be one of the important biomolecules that helps in provision of energy whereas other functions of carbohydrates are concerned it's important to note that the three functions that we are given last time that is primary energy source carbohydrates are used in the synthesis of dna and rna which are nucleic acids carbohydrates are used in cell as cell surface receptors which are used in cellular communication you should also note that there are other major groups of carbohydrates like disaccharides oligosaccharides and polysaccharides and to explain the other functions of carbohydrates it means that we have to state the specific functions of each of those examples in the other three groups of carbohydrates for example under disaccharides we have maltose maltose is used to make infant formula maltose is used by the seed when it is conducting the process of germination maltose is used to make flavors and when we come to a lactose that is what we call milk sugar we know that uh, mammals provide energy to the young ones through milk and uh, the sugar in that milk is what we call lactose then sucrose is the table sugar and we know there are so many functions of table sugar if we proceed and go to polysaccharides which we shall look at later it's important to note that there are examples of polysaccharides which serves other important functions in the human body for example we have uh, starch which is not necessary in the human body starch is a way by which plants save glucose for future use animals also save glucose for future use but not as starch we save glucose as glycogen we have other examples of polysaccharides like cellulose which is used to make the cell wall of plants we also have chitin which is used to make the exoskeleton of insects so you can see that there are so many other functions of carbohydrates especially when we go into specific groups of carbohydrates so carbohydrates are divided into four important groups so what will happen is i'm going to give you the groups here and show you an overview of what what is comprised in the same groups what is found in the same groups the composition of each of the groups number one there is a group of carbohydrates we shall look at this group is called monosaccharides the second group that we shall look at is called disaccharides then we have number three oligosaccharides And the fourth group is polysaccharide. Four groups of carbohydrates. Monosaccharides, disaccharides, oligo and polysaccharides. Now, mono in biochemistry we use it to mean one. Di two. Oligo, 3 to 10. Poly, more than 10. Then saccharide comes from a Greek word, saccharas. Saccharas simply means sugar. So when we say monosaccharides, we are simply saying one sugar, two sugars. 3 to 10 sugars, more than 10 sugars. So when you see a sugar that is the simplest 
By simplest we mean it can't be hydrolyzed. You can't break it down into any simpler means. It is the simplest carbohydrate on earth. When you see simplest, can't be broken down, because it can't be broken down and it's the simplest, it normally serves as a building block of all carbohydrates, because it is the starting point. When you see those, the characteristics on the board, this should show you that we are dealing with a monosaccharide. So in monosaccharides, these are sugars that are the simplest. They can't be broken down into any simpler means. They can't be hydrolyzed. And they serve as the building blocks. And building blocks in biochemistry, we simply refer this to as monomers. So monosaccharides are the simplest, can't be hydrolyzed, and the building blocks. What should we know about them? Remember when we, were, we learned about enzymes some time back, we said that enzymes end in the suffix O-S-E. A-S-E, sorry. So enzymes end in the suffix A-S-E. For example, an enzyme that works on lipids, we call it lipase. So you can see the suffix there. The ending word is A-S-E. And that, when you see that, it normally clicks. And you say, I'm dealing with an enzyme. With carbohydrates, they normally end in the suffix O-S-E. What are the examples of monosaccharides that we should know? The first example is that you know very well and you are familiar with is glucose. Galactose, fructose. I think from the knowledge we have from secondary school, we are able to remember the sugars I've listed on the board. But I want to mention something very important to you, which I'll discuss later. These monosaccharides, they are also classified inside. They are different groups. We classify them, number one, based on the number of carbon atoms they have. Number two, we classify them based on the functional group. So let us continue. We are still looking at carbohydrates and our first discussion is monosaccharides. After we finish monosaccharides, that's when we shall shift to disaccharides. So we have stated the definition of monosaccharides. We have looked at different ways of classifying monosaccharides. So we shall go into the details now. We want to understand how do you classify them based on the number of carbon atoms they have? How do you classify them based on the functional group? So number one, number of carbon atoms. I should mention to you that there is no carbohydrate on earth with one carbon atom. There's no carbohydrate on earth with two carbon atoms. They start from three. We have carbohydrates with three, four, five, six, and so on. In this course, our emphasis will be carbohydrates with three carbon atoms, carbohydrates with four carbon atoms, carbohydrates with five carbon atoms, and six carbon atoms. But our discussion, our discussion in details is focused on those monosaccharides that are used to generate energy in the human body. And we shall focus very much on those with the six carbon atoms. So where are we? We want to understand how we classify carbohydrates based on the number of carbon atoms. And I've said that we have those with three, four, five, and six. How do we call them? Remember, carbohydrates ends in the suffix O-S-E. 
E. So those carbohydrates with three carbon atoms, three, we get the term that we, use, we used to use some time back in mathematics, try. We just get try and add OSA and we call them trioses. Four is tetroses. Those with five, pentoses. Those with six, exoses. So this is how we classify carbohydrates based on the number of carbon atoms. Those with three, trioses. With four, tetroses. With five, pentoses. And six, exoses. And I've told you that we shall focus our discussion on exoses because they are physiologically very important in the human body. We use them to generate energy. So that is classification number one. As my students, you are required to give examples of such sugars in each group. What are the examples of sugars with three carbon atoms? What are the examples of those with four, five, and six? When you check the notes properly, you will see that under sugars with three carbon atoms, I have given two examples there. And I want you to remember them very well. One is glycerohaldehyde. The other one is dehydroxyacetone. Two examples, glycerohaldehyde, dehydroxyacetone. Don't be scared with the terminologies there. We shall discuss them in details. For now, just you should be able to give examples in each of the groups. Those with four, we can give an example of xylose. We can give an example of erythros. Those with five, those with five, take note. Those with five, are, examples are those we use to make DNA and RNA. DNA, deoxy ribose sugar, RNA, ribose sugar. One of the functions I gave you in the introduction is that we use carbohydrates to make DNA and RNA. So the sugars we use are simply examples of pentoses, deoxyribose and ribose sugar. Exoses, where we shall base our discussion very much, you are familiar with them and you know them very well. We have glucose, we have galactose, we have fructose, we have manose. So that is how we classify carbohydrates based on eh, the number of carbon atoms. Our second method of classification is classifying them based on the functional group that they have. That is classification number two. So classification number two is functional group. What is a functional group? You've learned about this in chemistry. And one of the important features of a functional group is that it determines the chemical properties or characteristics of a compound. Sugars can have two functional groups. Number one, a sugar can either have a functional group that is called anhydride. So this monosaccharide can have an anhydride functional group. Or it might have what is called a keto. What are the structures of the two? Anhydride is simply carbon double bonded to oxygen single bonded to an hydrogen atom. That is the structure of an aldehyde. A keto is carbon, double bonded to oxygen, single bonded to carbon, and single bonded to another carbon. That is the structure of a keto and an aldehyde. Remember, we are looking at the second classification method. So sugars with an aldehyde, we simply call them aldoses. Those with keto, we call them ketoses. There is something I should also explain about the two groups, something that you should remember very well. You did this in secondary school. 
Sugars with an aldehyde. When you put them in Benedict solution, which you all remember very well, we used to use this solution whenever we are testing a sugar for reducing or non-reducing. So sugars with an aldehyde, how doses? When you get them and put them in Benedict solution, Benedict solution is made up of copper 2 sulfate, which has a blue color. That's why Benedict solution looks blue, because of copper 2 sulfate. Now, when you get a sugar with an aldehyde functional group and put it in Benedict solution, this sugar has the ability to reduce copper 2 sulfate. And copper 2 sulfate becomes copper 1 sulfate. Copper 1 sulfate. And you know, a chemist some time back told you that when you reduce metals, they change color. So when a sugar with an aldehyde changes copper 2 sulfate to copper 1, the color changes from blue to red, which you normally call the brick red. And when a sugar does that, what do we call? We call this sugar a reducing sugar. What is the conclusion? Sugars with an aldehyde are reducing sugars, meaning those with a keto, they are non-reducing sugars.